Services, Just The Job. Hi there and welcome to Just The Job, the show that goes behind the scenes to a whole range of careers. And we've got three more great jobs lined up for you to take a look at today. And then at the end of the show, we're going to hear from Selwyn from Career Services, who's got some great advice to help you nab the job you want. In today's show, Luke helps build a house without even stepping foot on a building site. Rory gets a workout, but not at the gym, and discovers drain laying isn't for the faint-hearted. And Jamie has a real blast when he goes along to see what it's like to work at a quarry. First up, let's join Luke and see if his experience in building can translate to the skills needed to put frames and trusses together. Hi, I'm Luke. I'm into building, and I'd like to do that when I leave school, so I'd like to have a look at some framing. At the heart of every building is the framework that holds it all up. It's an important structure that is often built off-site in factories like Gary Raven Pre-Cut Limited. Gary owns and operates the business, building commercial and housing frames and trusses around the North Island. Well, builders can make their frames on site, but uh, in a factory situation, they are more efficient to make. Well, basically, bro, this is a computerised saw. We cut uh, pretty much everything to do with the house. At the moment, we're cutting trusses, which creates an angle on top of the house. Um, I'm basically going to get you to put a piece of timber up here, we'll cut a few cords. With a bit of instruction under his belt, Luke is given control of the machine. Once Luke selects the truss to be cut and the computer adjusts the length on the stop and the angle of the saw head, it's Luke's job to ensure that the timber is butted up hard against the stop to ensure the length and angle of the cut are accurate. And that's how it is then, it's done like that. After mastering cutting, Luke is off to the next part of the process with foreman Ian Smith. Over here what we're doing is we're marking all of the top and bottom plates for the wall framing. This is a picture of the wall framing over here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to locate all of the studs, uh, all of the top and bottom jacks for all of the window and all of the components for the walls. Yeah. I'll show you how you do it, eh? Yep. The two pieces of timber form the top and bottom of the frame. They have been stapled together to make marking easier. The marks Ian is making indicate the positions of the vertical studs and other structural elements of the frame. Marking it indicates where the studs or the windows and the doors go in the, in the wall. So when the guys assemble, assemble it, they know where to put the windows and doors. That is the size of the window that's going in this particular portion. Yeah. And it's height by width. It's very important that Luke has got those marks okay. in the right place because he's now taking the whole house worth over to Neville to get assembled. You are now in the, in the pre-nail um, area. This is where we make the walls, where we put all the walls together. And um, we'll start with panel 22. Thank you very much. If you could get it and put it up here, thank you. Pre-nail table is a table that uh, assembles the frames. Because it's got four guns, speeds up the process. Bang. Over the manual, no. Everything has to be flush, and particular care very must nice be taken to ensure the natural bows in the timber face inwards so that they are stretched out as they are nailed to the frame so they can create a stronger structure. That's two walls down, with each frame taking about 10 minutes to make. Neville quickly puts together the bones of the third frame for Luke to finish off with a nail gun. Push the gun in, then fire. Move your hand well away from the top. Take the weight of it a little bit, give it a little jiggle, and down she goes. Now that he knows the basics, Luke heads off to see AJ, who creates the plans AJ. that this whole process is based on. Basically, we'll get sent in a set of plans from a client. We'll go through and actually input the house into the program. It'll start um, designing roof trusses, um, more framing, and from that we can pull quantities of timber um, hardware plates and such and price it up. Yep. Okay, um, yeah, so let's get you um, having a go at putting in some of these plans and putting a job together. The architect's plans do not contain a lot of the structural detail required to keep the building up. If you didn't get the right loading for girders and it was incorrectly sized, then the roof would sag. So it's critical you get it right. It can take a day to complete design work and the program allows AJ to view the whole house in 3D, ensuring it is perfect. It's going to sound corny, but I really like this job. I, I like a lot of it. It's um, The problem solving for me is a favourite bit, i.e. working out something that hasn't been worked out in the plan um, and getting out on site and seeing some nightmare of a headache that you had two weeks ago, all finished and looking awesome. Yeah. 
With the trusses designed, it is now time for Luke to help build them with truss fabricator Dwayne Thompson. The frame is pinned together with staples to get everything into the basic shape. The trusses hold up the roof and need to be engineered by an accredited company, which means that this is one part of the building that cannot be made on site. I've had a lot of guys that have come through here, done there for three or four or five years and wanted to get out on site. We even had guys that come back to me because they don't like the wet weather out there. Nail plates are then compressed into the joints to create a strong connection. Good work, mate. This is a truss. We're finished. Um, now we're just going to put on the pole and grab another one. The house is complete and ready to be trucked off. So how did Luke do? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I think he really took note of what was going on in the place. And, and I think the boys are really appreciate working with him. Uh, I thought it was really good and heaps of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. The National Certificate in Frame and Trust Manufacturing includes three stages. Stage 1 includes basic building industry skills, Stage 2 includes skills specific to frame and trusses, and Stage 3 is a specialisation in either frames or trusses. It should take a trainee somewhere between 18 months to two years to complete a qualification with the Building and Construction Industry Training Organisation. Frame and truss manufacturers need to be fit, healthy and strong. They also need to have steady hands and good hand-eye coordination. Well, didn't Luke do a great job? I reckon he's definitely got what it takes if he decides to work in the building industry, so best of luck, Luke. After the break, we're going to catch up with Rory and see how he gets on when he joins a family business where an energising pie will set them up for a hard day's drain laying. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, the programme where we look at three diverse careers every week to give you an insight into some of the amazing careers that are out there waiting for you. Now, a sense of humour wouldn't go amiss in this next career, but there's definitely more to the job than that, as Rory is about to find out. Hi, I'm Rory. I'm 17 years old. I go to King's College and I'm in seventh form. And today, I'm going to learn all I can about drain laying. Drain laying is not for the faint-hearted or the weak of stomach. You want to be a drain layer, eh, mate? Yeah. And Russell Brown, with 30 years of experience, has a keen eye and a firm understanding for what it takes. Right, let's see what you're made of. Jump in. Russell owns his own business, and with his sons Doug and Tim working under him, they're a third-generation drain laying dynasty. Are those shoes, mate? <laughs> they gotta go. And whilst personal safety is a must, they also have to look out for the public. Must feel pretty good, but you get the odd nosy person that wants to jump in the hole and have a bit of a splash in the mud. So you've got to keep the cones out ready for these. Fair enough. But before they kick into the grunt work, it's the working man's breakfast of choice. Well, you better grab yourself a pie. The roof is, uh, you need the energy yeah. to get into it. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, take it. Definitely the job for me. I've got three pies. The problem we've been getting here is the um, council have contacted us because this house down here continually gets flooded during heavy rain because this cesspit here doesn't function properly. It just hasn't got the catchment to pick up all the stormwater in a heavy rain. This old drain and the surrounding kerb needs to be removed before the new moulded concrete kerb with its expanded mouth can be laid in. How are we going to do that? We'll be um, saw cutting, we've already measured it out, saw cutting uh, three metre distance here and we're going to be um, breaking all the kerb and channel out all this concrete. The bar finds out what sort of a man you are. <laughs> I can tell you don't play rugby. <laughs> so, so how many wheat picks can you eat, mate? <laughs> I suggest you double it. <sighs> it's harder than what Tiger does, and we don't get the money. Hard stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Single truck is blasting and we can find it. Of course. While Rory licks his wounds, Doug finishes the job. Right, Rory, uh, we're going to now use the breaker to break this concrete out that you couldn't get out with the hammer. They're quite easy to use, but they're very heavy and um, can be quite tiring, you know, if you're using them all day. Feels weird, up and down, jiggly. One thing about this industry, you don't have to be big. In actual fact, some of the places we go, it's better to be small. You know, you don't have to have degrees and things like that. You just have to have a good attitude, a good work ethic, 
and uh, be prepared to get stuck in. And you know, there's a good living to be made out of it if you if you do it right. There's a national certificate in drain laying, with advisors like Peter Gembitsky, who keep regular contact with the apprentice throughout the two-year course. You've got to really have a, a want to do it because it's a dirty job, as you can see. It's filthy. Um, you work hard. The rewards are good, though. It takes um, approximately 18 months to two years to qualify. These guys are teaching you, so you learn as you go, and then at the end you have a block course. Like an exam was. It's a practical exam. They have a basically a huge sand pit, and they have um, drains, they have stormwater, they have surge, and they put you in there and they ask you to dig it and run the drains through it, and that's your practical exam at the end. So firstly we're going to get our centre point, which I've marked out already, and we're going to put this one in with our digger and um, using the chains, and then we're going to put these on the sides. It's a pretty basic process, but it's quite dangerous. Roads and highways visibly crisscross our cityscapes, but drains, a crucial infrastructure, lie hidden underground, and without them, we'd have no indoor plumbing, no sewage and constant flooding. Everyone needs drain layers. We're very important, actually. We're very important for the health of the planet because without drain layers, um, there'd be a lot of disease. It's a big thing, you know. So, no, I'm proud to be a drain layer, you know. I could say I'm a brain surgeon, but I'm not. I'm a drain layer, and I'm proud of it. We're actually like surgeons. We both bury our mistakes. Yep, I'm happy with that. We have to get the concrete mixer going now, Rory. Yep. Pump it all that into place. It's kind of a trade that people don't know about. And a lot of people just get in, they get into it, they think, oh, I'll become a labourer. And then all of a sudden they're working in a drainage gang. And then they're thinking, oh man, I never knew this even existed, you know? You drive down the street and you don't even know what's underneath, where the water actually goes, and it comes out of the sky. And where does it all go? It's got to go somewhere. It's a good outdoors sort of a industry, isn't it? Yeah, but you get um, fit from doing it. Yeah, it's a good healthy job if you leave the pies and the booze alone. <laughs> <laughs> but they tend to go with the territory. Yeah. <laughs> so how did Rory do? He's probably got what it takes. He's, he's got a good attitude. He's a nice young jugger, and um, yeah, we could turn him into something. But uh, he he left to toughen up. I reckon after a few months of training apprenticeships, I think I could be able to do it. But it would take a lot of learning, a lot of hard work. To complete a national certificate in drain laying level four, you need to be fit and strong, and sometimes you need to work in tight, confined spaces. Basic math skills are required to make measurements and read plans, and a good attitude, hard work ethic, and the ability to work as part of a team are important. The Plumbing, Gas Fitting and Drain Laying ITO offers a national certificate in drain laying. This two-year course involves on-the-job training and practical exams. Well, there's certainly loads of opportunities in drain laying if you're looking for an outdoors career. And if you're interested in finding out more about drain laying or any of the careers featured throughout the show, then jump on our website. We'll have all those details for you very shortly. After the break, though, we're going to catch up with Jamie, who's in for a few surprises when he checks out a career in quarrying. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow, then make sure you join us each week as we cover a whole range of jobs that you never know could end up being your future career. Let's join Jamie now as he's about to get a real hands-on experience. Hi, my name's Jamie Phillip. I'm 17 years old, and I go to Manitoba High School, and I'm going to find out what it takes to be a quarry worker. First stop for Jamie is one of four quarries owned by HG Leaching Company. G'day, Jamie. Dean Torsten's an HG Leaching Company. Um, a little bit skinny for a bloody quarry. We'll <laughs> see what we can do for you. Oh, cheers. OK, Jamie, let's get this makeover underway. Hard hat for your head. A pair of overalls to keep you clean. Nice high-vis shirt to make sure that you don't get run over, because I don't want to clean the mess up after you. Crikey, mate, that was quick. Right, let's get out amongst it and see what it's all about. Without the rock from quarries, we'd have no roads or buildings. There's a massive demand for aggregate, and every year, 11 tonnes, or one truckload of it, is used for every man, woman and child in New Zealand. The red represents what we're currently extracting. The blue is an overburden, which is a material that we don't use. It's not suitable for extraction, um, but it still has to be removed to give us access to, to the rock below. You fancy you go on that digger? Oh yeah, you sure? Come on then, let's go. Our guys can multitask to the point where they can operate loaders, they can operate the trucks, they're familiar with the crushing plant, the maintenance of that equipment, even down to the diggers and bulldozers. So they get a huge variety. Now engage that, mate. Yeah, now she's ready to rock and roll, OK? OK. 
Okay, mate, for a start, what you can do is just pull that arm back. The, the motor will rev itself. Yep. Okay, mate, now this is the motion you want to go for. You want to go down and then you want to pull back and curl at the same time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, it feels like it's a bit scary, eh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. control of a big metal object. What we look for in a new employee is someone that's got a bit of enthusiasm, someone that's, that's not too afraid to get dirty. You've got to have a bit of a, a good mechanical aptitude. Very, very similar to um, playing PlayStation 8. What I've found in this industry so far is that people that are good with playing computer games are normally good operators. Uh, I should have no worries then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And another one is a team fit. Is, is what we look for too, which is very important. Excellent. Easy. Excellent, Jamie. Nice, mate. Looks like you got a future. <laughs> <laughs> future in this business. But for now, Jamie got to do what would be the envy of his mates. Geez, I don't know if they would believe me, you know? Controlling a big digger like that, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was really amazing, you know? Just, um, just you can feel the, the power of it, you know? You'd be picking up the rocks and everything and you can feel the machine shaking around and, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Winding up the second year of his on-the-job modern apprenticeship, Corbin is manning the machines, processing the very aggregate which Jamie dug up. This is the control panel for the bottom fixed plant. Number one feeder controls the number one bin over there and brings the rocks down to your number two bin. Then it goes along your belt, up to your AP screen. The screen separates the uh, oversized metal from the correct size metal. You know, what's your, what's your favourite part of this job? What do you like doing? Uh, that would be operating the machines. Yeah, probably the loader. Yeah. The final product yeah, finds itself it separated nice. into neat little mountains of metal, yeah, each graded by size and quality, each destined for various uses from roading to building to concreting. So it's worth quite a bit? Yes, very much so. And uh, how much for this handful here? <laughs> <laughs> For you, mate, because you've done such a good job today, it's free. Awesome. Take it home with you. <laughs> so, do you get much satisfaction out of your job? Mate, love it. Absolutely love it. Good team environment to work in. Everybody chips in, does the same. Everybody helps each other out. Um, you will not get a better, better industry to be in. And uh, what's the go of this thing here? Do you uh, drive these? Do you want to have a go? You sure? Come on, mate. Let's have a look. Mate, you're taking it down the road, just a couple of k's down. Leave you to it, eh? All the best. Cheers. Good to meet you. But Jamie's play date with the big boys' toys is not over yet. He's paying a visit to the McDonald's quarry, which specialises in lime. And today, everyone's counting down to one hell of a bang. So what we're standing on here, is this all going to be exploded? It is. Um, this rock here for today, um, the area that we're blasting is going to equate to approximately 27,000 tonne of rock. This won't be here in 10 minutes' time. To, to do that, we are actually using 3.5 tonne of explosives in the ground. Darcy started out at the bottom as a machine driver and worked his way up. He's now quarry manager and in charge of 15 men and millions of dollars of machinery. That detonator there yep. is what we call a Category 8. It will blow your hand off. OK, so we poke it down through there. Push it right through, grab the rubber, put it back up, and it locks. Can't go any further, OK? So we lower that into the hole, holding it all the time so you've got control. You'll feel it hit the bottom. So from there, we will um, let them load with explosives, and we'll come and put the surface delays on, OK? Today, we're initiating the shot with our remote control system. The reason we're using the remote control system is uh, for safety, and safety is paramount in the quarry. Yep. And we have the remote system which pulls apart and screws together. And you can stand up to one kilometre away with this remote system. OK. And do you enjoy your job? I love it. I love it. We've got customers right throughout New Zealand. And as I say, if you're into a good explosion and a, a lot of travelling, it's a brilliant job to be in. And how would you like to try and fire this remote system today? Are you serious? Yep. There's no worries. I'll talk you through it. Awesome. From packing bags to packing explosives, there's no doubt about it. Jamie's having an action-packed day. So now what we'll do is press both buttons, keep that one pressed down, and press that one down, and the shot will go off. Bang! How was that? <laughs> Man, that was crazy. 
you can feel, feel the ripple, you know, through your body. Yeah, feel the shock waves coming out. It's called an air blast. It's called an air blast when you feel the shock wave. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's what we do every day. So did our boy Jamie blow it or have a blast? Uh, Jamie did very well. Uh, take him up to the blasting, the explosives. It looked like a kid with fireworks, so <laughs> that was great. Jamie, give me a call, mate. I'm more than happy to take you on board. It's definitely been worth it, eh? I really recommend this for anyone else looking to go for, for a job in uh, quarrying. It's truly really awesome. To become a quarry worker, you should be reasonably fit and strong with a liking for working outdoors. It also helps to have a mechanical interest and be able to work as part of a team. You need to be over 16 and school certificate or NCEA equivalent English and maths are useful. Almost all skills are learnt on the job and further education and training is available through the Extractive Industries Training Organisation. Well, Jamie definitely had a blast with that experience, so thank you, Jamie, and to everyone else who featured in today's show. Now, we really hope our programs are helping you narrow down your career choices a little, but to help you even more, Career Services has loads of information and resources available to you, and here's Selwyn now with some more great advice. Making career decisions can be really confusing. There's a lot of information out there. On the Career Services website, there's a section called My Career, where you can create your own personalised career space. You can save information about your skills and interests, what courses and jobs you're researching, possible career goals, and even create and save your CV to come back to as often as you like. Go to careers.govt.nz and click on My Career. Well, that's it from us. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week with three more exciting careers, plus loads of tips to help you succeed in getting the career you want. If you'd like more information about any of the careers you've seen here today, or just more info about how to make that right career choice, then jump on our website at tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. Good luck, and I'll see you again next week. Zealand on air.